In this video, I'm going to uh, take my little AM transmitter that I built in the one of the previous videos, and I'm going to put a SO239 coaxial connector on here, just so that I can connect external antennas a little bit easier than the, the screw terminals. I'm not increasing the power or anything, I'm just going to put the jack on there and we'll see if it improves things. Well, in this video, I'm going to uh, mount my external SO239 connector onto my little AM stereo transmitter that I built uh, there a few weeks ago so I can hook it to a real antenna and hopefully get rid of that hum that I've got that's creeping into the wire antenna that I've just been using without a ground. So let's open this thing up and we'll, we'll produce another video that is unsuitable for advertisers. So we pop the case apart just by squeezing down and popping apart the, the case. Okay, here's the transmitter. What I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the wires going to the terminal in the back. And we'll just drill a hole in here to put this old connector. As I'm sure that uh, having a proper coaxial connector on there will certainly give me a better signal than I'm getting currently from this terminal block that's on here. So we'll remove that. Now pull the wires back inside. I'm going to use the original uh, hole here I think as my as a reference point. Let's see here how is this going to go in. Uh, maybe like that. Okay, you're going to have to cut a fairly large hole in the back here. What I think I will do is I will uh, I'll disconnect the wires here so that I can actually take the back right off of the unit and work on it away from the, uh, the chassis. So I'm just going to heat up my iron so I can unsolder the uh, power inlet jack and we'll unsolder the audio inputs. And that way I can drill this, I can put it on my drill press and drill this and mount this connector properly. Okay, I've now taken the back off. I can put the rest of the transmitter aside. And I'm just going to go and uh, go to my other workshop where I've got the drill press and I'm going to drill a hole so that I can mount this connector in the back. And that way... That way I can connect it up to an external antenna. Okay, the hole is now drilled. I didn't want to show you guys the uh, process of doing that because uh, that would definitely fall under the advertiser unfriendly guidelines. I probably have WorkSafe jumping all over me too for not using my protective equipment. So we're going to screw this thing in here. Well, we will when I get the hole big enough to put the, the screw through. That's what screwdrivers are for, right? Drilling holes. Because it's threaded right into the... Uh, I might just do that. I might make this one my ground wire. Because as you can see, this is threaded right into the... Uh, connector itself. I have basically tapped the threads into the connector. So if I put the screw through this way, through the plastic and then into the connector, it will pull it tight and that can become my my ground post. Okay, got the connector attached now. We're going to connect the ground wire. I was going to put the ground wire, crown wire under the screw here and we'll tighten it down and then I'll put the nut on the other end of it and torque that down. And 
and we'll put the, the nut on the other side here and tighten this right down and then torque it down good and tight. Okay, that's on good and tight. Now we'll attach the main center connector. Oh, great. I grabbed some lead free solder. Oh well, I guess I'll have to use it. Just what I picked up first. Okay, there's our center conductor. We'll reconnect our power wires here and our audio input. And I'll take this and connect it up to an antenna and we'll, we'll see how it performs. The reason I'm putting a bit of a twist in here is this is just to take off any RF that might uh, get into the wire here before it gets into the audio stage. So I'm just going to put a bit of a twist like this done on the on the power wires over here. This is just to decouple any RF that might make its way back in. There's our audio in connected. Now we'll just put the transmitter back together. I don't think I'll have to retune anything in here as far as the uh, as far as the AM stereo section goes. Everything should be still in tune. We'll put the cover back on it. So there's what it looks like now, finished, with the proper connector on the back. Let's uh, see if it works, or see how it works. And there's the, uh, the finished product. Stereo. Mono. Stereo. Mono. Okay, I haven't put an external antenna on it. I've just 
basically wired the, the dipole antenna to the coax connector. It just makes it a little more e convenient to connect it rather than having to, uh, you know, thread on, screw it on. I still got a bit of a hum because I don't have it transmitted. I don't have the uh, transmitter grounded, but, uh, you know, it's got a bit of an AC hum in the background, but if I ground it, it'll actually improve that. But you know what? For what I need this thing for, I just need this thing for testing my radios here. And uh, it's not bad. It's not bad. I don't want it necessarily going too far. So uh, as it sits right now, if I turn the power up all the way, I can get uh, to the end of the block, which is uh, kind of pushing it as far as part 15 uh, regulations go. So this is just for testing my radios under repair. It'll do the job. Right now I'm about, uh, I guess I'm about 40 feet. The transmitter's on the other side of the house, so. And it's just a piece of wire that's about seven feet long is all I'm using to transmit, so. Doing the job. So I'll let you guys hear the difference between uh, uh, normal band and wide band. So here's wide band. There's normal AM radio. Mono, normal AM radio. There's stereo, and then if we press the wide band button. Normal. And wide band just brings up the highs a bit. See the difference here. If I tune it off recently. Wide band. Much wider bandwidth. We'll catch you in the next video. Coming up soon.